Welcome to Biodiesel Magazine's Top Stories for Late February. I'm your host, Jill Nelson. Industry veterans Joe Job of Rock House Advisors and Peter Burley of PB Renewables announced the introduction of Biodiesel Tax Credit Bridge Loan Funding for Biodiesel Producers. Job and Burley are working with a $5.5 billion financial institution that fully understands the history of the BTC and the quality of the BTC credit. The bank is willing to rapidly underwrite and approve BTC-backed bridge loans to biodiesel producers while the producers wait the return of their 2018 and 2019 BTC refunds from the IRS. For more information, please contact Joe Job at 573-680-1948 or email joe at rockhouse.us. Nextchem of Italy and Kansas-based Sala Energy have formed a new partnership to license renewable diesel technology to the international market. Saula Energy's patented technology consists of a hydro treatment step followed by isomerization to produce renewable diesel from oils and residual fats. The process can be modular and is possible for capacities as low as 10 million gallons per year. This technology has been implemented at East Kansas Agra Energy, an ethanol plant located in Garnet, Kansas. Under the new collaboration, Nextchem will be the licensor of the combined technology and will provide clients with EPC services and training. After more than three years, six million dollars of investment and thousands of hours of management time, North Dakota soybean processors announced that it is abandoning its efforts to build a large-scale soybean crushing facility at the Spiritwood Energy Park in Spiritwood, North Dakota. Last July, the Spiritwood Energy Park Association Board voted to terminate the site contract, and NDSP took the matter to court. In early February, NDSP agreed with the Association Board to dismiss its lawsuit without prejudice, meaning its bid to build a plant at the Spiritwood site is over. NDSP plans to move forward with its efforts to bring the first farmer-owned soybean crush plant to the state of North Dakota. It just won't be in Spiritwood. Manitoba Premier Brian Pallister recently announced that the province is increasing its biodiesel and ethanol blend requirements as a part of the Made in Manitoba Climate and Green Plan. Manitoba will increase the biodiesel content requirement in diesel fuel from 2 to 5 percent and the ethanol requirement in gasoline from 8.5 to 10 percent. Industry, stakeholder and citizen consultations will take place in the coming months, Pallister said, adding that any necessary regulation changes will be made this spring. To view these stories in their entirety or for more news, features, or data from the most respected and viewed biodiesel site in the world, visit biodieselmagazine.com. See you next time.